What do you do when you're faced with the no-win scenario? You change the rules. Welcome to another Thursday and Geeks of the Week, I'm Mario. This week I answer questions, give you some quick links, and finally review some comics. Now on to the video. Steph asks, what's our sign and do we agree with the description? What's my sign? When someone asks me that, I usually think of something like this. Well hello, I'm a Sagittarius. I love long Gundam style dances by the beach. A beautiful nerd dinner in the moonlight. And finally, reading some comics with a flashlight. No, not with a candle. That's how accidents happen. But no, really, as Steph mentioned, we had an email conversation about this, and I do agree with a lot of what it, the description said, so let me share just a quick one with you guys. Sagittarius makes an excellent friend because of their encouraging, positive nature and their kind heart that will do anything to make a friend happy. They do not expect favors in return, their kindness is selfless. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I never expect anything in return when I do something for someone. That's a positive. And the negative in here, that it says that, I mean, motionless? I'm not a robot. As you will see in Nikki's question, I have feelings. Contrary to popular belief, I have feelings. Luluko asked the rest of the group a question, and since I'm part of the group, I'm going to answer it too. And that is, what fandom did you get into that at first you were hesitant or didn't think you might enjoy, but you ended up loving? I'm going to go with House, the TV show. You know, my brother kept telling me to watch it, and at the time I was watching Scrubs, and I felt like, no, 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 it, it feels like it's just a ripoff of the Dr. Cox character. So when I started watching House, I was absolutely wrong. He's more like a Sherlock Holmes type of character. And I ended up loving House, and I was sad when the series ended. But yeah, I mean, House. Which now I want to kind of see a House Sherlock Holmes crossover. That would be really, really cool. But yeah, that's the answer. Luluko was wearing her awesome Smashing Pumpkin shirt as she straight up called me out and asked me what are the top 3 comics a newbie should be reading. I'm going to base my recommendations on the accessibility for a new reader and the ability to jump into the title right now. Because comic book arcs do go on for a while and it's never a good idea to jump in the middle. So here we go in no particular order. Hawkeye. If you enjoy the character of Hawkeye from the movie The Avengers, you really will like this comic. He, Hawkeye is a brash, confident, cocky character. The writing is solid, the artwork is beautiful. There's two issues in, so it's easy to jump in. You technically don't even have to pick up the two issues because they're kind of self-contained stories, but that are moving along a larger plot. It's very affordable, it's $2.99, definitely new reader friendly, and you don't even have to worry about uh, the larger Marvel Universe sleeping in, at least not right now. Definitely worth to check out. The next one is Hit Girl. If you've seen the movie Kick-Ass, then you know who she is. She's a badass little chick. It's Sadly, the third issue has been kind of delayed. There's two issues in, but it gives new readers opportunity to catch up easily. Also, two nine nine, very affordable. And last but not least, Harvest. Let me mention what this comic is about. It's about a disbarred doctor who is now working for some shady people, transferring organs to the rich and powerful that they acquire in the black market. It's a really sick and twisted premise. The artwork is awesome. I definitely recommend it for new readers. It's $3.50, so the price is a little steep, but you don't have to worry about years of continuity. All you have to worry about is picking up these two issues and then just continue to follow along with the story. Very cool, very awesome, easy to follow, new reader friendly. So, and quick honorable mentions to the DC New 52. If you're gonna pick up a DC New 52 title, now would be the time. As they're resetting with their zero issues, their new arcs are coming along in the 13th issue. So I definitely would recommend Batman and Wonder Woman because those comics are always solid. And Chew because the dialogue is always engaging and ideally it'd be, easy, it'd be better to jump in from the start and pick up the trades. But if you're going to jump in, it's definitely a comic you will like because you know the dialogue will just engage you and grab you right away. And just quickly, uh, just because I like continue talking about comics, these are my top five comics that I'm reading right now that I love, and these are in order. Lock and Key, which is still the comic I always recommend to people, but that's the type of comic which is an epic. You have to start from the beginning. The trades are easily affordable by now. You can find them used, but definitely start from the beginning with Lock and Key. Number two is Saga, number three is Chew, number four is Journey into Mystery, and number five is Punk Rock Jesus. So I hope that answered your question, Luluko. I probably talked about this topic way longer than I should have. But if you have any more questions, feel free to write them in comments, ask them in the Geeks of the Week, or emails. I will gladly try to help. I hope you found this helpful at all. Oh, and really quick before I go, what's your favorite Smashing Pumpkin song? Tell me, right now. Tell me. 
Nikki leveled up by unlocking emotional box achievement by asking what fictional character has made you cry. And I really had to dig down deep to try to remember the first time because I probably suppressed it. And I remember now that it was the giving tree. That tree gave so much. I just remember crying by the end of it. It's the first time a book ever made me cry. And the more recent one, and I think more impressive, is Toy Story 3. Because I was warned, hey, that's a sad movie. So I went in it with my shields up. But it was just no match for their emotional photon torpedo. Because that opening scene with Andy and the last scene just was gut-wrenching and hit me. And I really tried not to cry, but I just couldn't help it. I was just crying. But as Nikki and Pyro have mentioned, it's really, really awesome when you get so attached to these fictional characters that they mean to you as much as actual people. That's when you know you have something special on your hands. I'm going to share a couple quick links with you guys. If you want to see an adorable little girl, basically be Korra from The Legend of Korra, check the link below. And there's been a lot of Gundam style parody videos, so maybe you don't want to see one more, but I promise you this one's worth it. It's Deadpool doing Gundam style. He's the perfect character to do that dance, so check the link below, I promise you it's worth it. Now on to the comic book reviews. This week I'll be reviewing Journey into Mystery, issue 643, part 3 of Everything Burns Art. Written by Gary Alien and Matt Fraction, art by Chris Sotomayor. The story thus far is Surtur setting all the Nine Realms to flames, Thor's on the front lines trying to stop them, the Asgardians are helping them, but they're fighting amongst themselves because there's been political shakeups on who's in charge, as everything Kid Loki has ever done has been revealed, and now everyone hates him even more. Loki is trying to fix things because it's technically his fault. There's a big reveal in this issue, that if it's true, if, whoa, seriously, forget Chris Angel, Karen Gillian is a mind freak, he freaked your mind, using words. These last few issues, he's been sending me and Steph on a few roller coaster ride. Now that his run on this series is coming to an end, I'm really starting to see what it's all been about, and it's brilliant. I'm really enjoying this last arc, the artwork is gorgeous, I cannot wait to see what happens next, I rate this issue 5 out of 5 stars. Next, I will be reviewing Batman Issue Zero, written by Scott Snyder and now by Greg Capullo. And this is set six years in the past, or one year before the reboot. As Bruce Wayne has returned from his training to Gotham and is trying to figure out how he's going to fight crime, he infiltrates the Red Hood gang and tries to stop him. The second story is I think about all the Robins and Batgirl, Dick, Jason, Tim, and Barbara. And the reason I say I think is because all their ages are kind of similar, so I'm not sure when each would have been Robin. This is another well-crafted story by Snyder. I really enjoyed seeing the early beginnings of Bruce and Batman, and the scenery kind of resembled Nolan's scenery in the movie, and that was a nice touch. I really enjoyed the second story. It gave insight to each of the different characters in the Batman universe, but I just wish there was a more definitive answer on who was Robin and when, because that kind of takes you out of the story. This is a perfect jumping out point for any new reader, but not exactly necessary. The next issue is going to involve Joker, and I definitely recommend that one. Still, this was a solid issue, and I rated 4 out of 5 stars. Next, Action Comics Issue 0, written by Grant Morrison and Albert Ben Oliver. And this issue takes place one year before the reboot, and the first story is simple. It's about the boy who found Superman's cape, and the second one sets up a Superman villain. I really enjoyed the main story. Superman's interaction with the kid was priceless. The child's backstory was sad, but the way he ended up using the kid was really cool. The real standout for me was the artwork. It was gorgeous and I loved it. Especially the scene where the kid is wearing Superman's cape. It kind of reminded me of me and my childhood and how I'd pretend to be Superman too by wearing a cape. But that's the only part of that scene that reminds me of it because it gets really dark really fast. The second story isn't any good, it's not entertaining and you can skip it. This issue was indicative of why Superman makes you believe everything's still going to be okay. There's been 13 issues in this run so far and only 2 real standouts. Sally has been very mediocre and has been very disappointing for me. I wish all the issues can be as great as this one. I rate this comic 4.5 out of 5 stars. Finally, 2 quick recommendations. Superman Family Adventures. Simply put, this is the best Superman title out there today. It's by the same creative team that brought you Titan Titans. If you're a fan of all things Superman, I'm talking about animated movies, then you will definitely get all the inside jokes. It is funny, well written, very clever, very witty. There's not been a weak issue yet, and I definitely recommend it. And the Star Trek Doctor Who crossover. I'm more of a Trekker than a Whovian, but you don't have to be a lot into Doctor Who to be getting it, and I hope it's vice versa. I hope the Doctor Who fans have been enjoying it too. I specifically picked this issue because it's very brave of a Cyberman to face down Captain Kirk's dropkick because nothing beats Captain Kirk's dropkick. 
That does it for me. Remember to comment because I enjoy comments. Subscribe. Check out the other more badass geeks of the week. And to live long and stay geeky. I don't care if it's romantic. If you burn one of my comments, it's over.